joins us now. Thanks so much for joining us. But the timing couldn't be better I mean, on this project. I mean, you really lucked into the timing on it's this. It's like writing itself. Right? You know, in real exactly. time. Yeah. Uh, so you've worked with so many iconic athletes. You've worked with yeah. Kobe and LeBron and obviously Tom Brady. Tell me what makes Steph Curry different. Man, you know, it's it's a question I keep getting. And the thing about Steph is he's the real deal. Like everything you've kind of heard about him in terms of his humility and his grace and, and um, his character, it's it's real. Like you get behind that curtain and you see that, you know, he's just a genuine guy who's really team first, you know, and um, you know, I think the other thing is just like now having spent almost a year working on this project and really getting to know him and his family, you get, I mean, it's unbelievable what you see on the court and behind. You would think there's like this, you know, this really defined disciplined process. It's kind of chaos. I mean, he's got three little kids. He's got a wife who's having her own explosive moment in terms of her career. And uh, yeah, it's just like there's constant action and yet you get to the floor and this guy is just so zen and balanced right. and, and like I said, team first. I know most of these projects you don't come up with what's going to be the message, but Tom versus time, it's fairly simple yeah. as far as what we're dealing sure. with. Also, you have the Patriots, Belichick, how long will he allow Tom to play? So there was some conflict there. Yeah. <laughs> now as you try to move on, See, I don't see the conflict in Steph. So what is the storyline absent of I'm following around one of the greatest basketball players ever? Yeah, well, so there's a, there's a sports conflict, right? Like it's probably the defining um, organization of its era in terms of the NBA. So can they win four in five years? Can they win their third straight? How are they gonna, you know, free agency, just all the different things that are going on on that team. I mean, there's just a natural conflict of like watching a sports story unfurl. But then, yeah, I mean, to your point, and I joke with Steph all the time, is like you're always looking, you know, a storyteller for conflict in your character, mm -hmm. tension. He is like the most sort of, balanced Zen guy, but then that, you know, it's like you lean right into that. It's like, okay, well, can I unpack this? Can I sort of decode this and figure out like what is the source of all of this success? And in Steph's case, which we didn't really do with Tom, it's like you really can go into the backstory. You can look at the genesis over time. You can talk about, you know, Dell and Sonny Curry, Seth Curry, and just mm -hmm. like this, this thing that's emerged over, you know, 30 years at this point. And in their case has kind of all been documented because they filmed a lot of it. One of the first words you used to describe Steph was humility. And I, you're a lot of people who have spent time around him, not just watch him from far, spend time around him, describe him as humble or as yeah. says he has great humility. On the court, he's about as braggadocious as any player we have. Yeah. But people that know him say off the court, he has almost none of the superstar diva frills that we associate with a lot of athletes of his stature. When you talk with him versus when you watch him, can you draw that dichotomy for me yeah. and explain kind of who he is that we're not always seeing? Well, so I think a lot of people have heard him talk about his faith. And I think his faith is very real in his life. And I think his humility off of the court stems from that. I mean, he's humble. He's he's also grown up around this kind of stardom. You know, he grew up in an NBA family. So I think he's very comfortable with that fame and it, it doesn't really, rat, nothing really rattles him. Yeah, on the court, he's, I mean, look, he's He's one of the greatest players of all time. In my opinion, he's the greatest shooter of all time. He he knows that. I mean, he has that bravado. You saw it the other, you know, what was it in um, against the the Rockets a week ago or so? Like zero points in the first half. It didn't shake his confidence at all. He has so much confidence in himself, and and I think that's where that bravado on the court stems from. In reading some of the build up to this series, you mentioned that Steph feels this urgency to win with this iteration of yeah. the Golden State Warriors before free agency is upon us, before the team breaks up. How much does that weigh on him? Because we talk so much about Draymond, what he wants, and yeah. Katie. You don't really hear so much about that from Steph yeah, Curry. I'm not sure how much it weighs on him, but I think you know when you get to a certain level, I saw this certainly with Tom, you're, or elite athletes in general, LeBron, Kobe, etc. you're always looking for that edge. You're always looking for that thing to motivate you. And across an 82 game season, you need that. So I think it's actually become a sort, like they don't know uncertainty. I mean, every day it's changing. You guys talk about it. Who yeah. knows? That's like, why we have a yeah. show, basically. <laughs> so I don't think anybody knows, including the people on that team, 
And so I think that like they use that as like there's a there's an hourglass here. What we do know is what we have right now, where we are, and that becomes the motivation to you know not let it slip away. But actually, there not being an answer is an answer. Yeah. For these guys, with at this point in their career, for him not to say yes, I am going to continue here in Golden State, that is the answer that most people are obviously looking at. And all the other stories, we talked about the conflict. But the other stories, they didn't have the superstar. Tom Brady, they got Gronk, they got Belichick. They were just a little part of the right. story. How do you mix in with the focus being Steph? But I could argue that KD is a bigger superstar. Draymond has a big personality. Now, Clay blends in because he's his own self and everything. But that makes this story very, very different than the other stories yeah. also. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, it's the Beatles. It's like, you know, how do you keep this together? And I, in one of our interviews with Steve Kerr, he talks about maintaining greatness is way harder than attaining greatness. You know, when it's out there and you're just sort of relentlessly chasing, you've never tasted it before, it's one thing, but trying to keep this sort of alchemy you know in mm -hmm. in in balance is tough and and different personalities i mean i think he said in one of his quotes also he said you know 90 percent of my job is off the court and just managing personalities this is again where guys like you know um steph are really good i'd say that's probably his greatest contribution and gift to his team is like his persona and his ability to sort of navigate these dominant personalities like Draymond, KD, et cetera, um, on his team, because that is, that's the most fragile piece, you know? And you, and you know, as a player, it's, it's not like, at that level, like there's so much talent. It's like, how do you manage like the chemistry and, mm -hmm. just, and just all the emotions, especially across, you know, how long is the NBA season? Like five, six months. Right, yeah. plus the playoffs. So what, what do you make of the kinship between he and Draymond? Where obviously since KD went down, seeing them on the court immediately go back to the pre-KD days of, while we talked about them as the Splash Brothers, Steph and Clay, yeah. the two most important guys were always Steph yeah. and Draymond. That hive mind they have on the court and their relationship off the court. What can you yeah. tell us about that? I mean, it's great. And I've gotten to know, you know, outside of um, Steph, I'd say Draymond's the guy I know um, next best on that team. And he, yeah, I mean, it's actually, it's such a different personality from Steph. It's almost, a, but they complement each other. And I think, you know, um, Mark Thompson described them as uh, Gronk and Brady, to use another sort of, mm -hmm. they're different personalities, but that chemistry is, is pretty amazing. And I think it's, again, it goes back to that as soon as KD went down, everyone, myself included, was like, oh man, like what's gonna happen here? Yeah. This could be a real disaster. But I think they look at that as a challenge. It has nothing to do with KD. I think they love him, they want him to come back, they're a better team with, with him. But that doubt that everybody throws their way, it helps fuel, and you're seeing those two guys in particular just rise to the occasion. So much of Tom versus time was Tom reflecting on his career. With Steph Curry very much in the thick of his career right now, do you get a sense that he understands what kind of impact he has and has had on the game and probably will have on the game? Yeah, I think he's aware of it. I think, you know, because again, there's so much chatter all the time, mm -hmm. but I don't think he spends a lot of time. I mean, he's different. He's at a different place in his career. He's a different place in his life. Um, you know, he doesn't. I remember earlier in the season, just in one of those conversations at a dinner table, we were talking about top five, top 10 players of all times. And, you know, he did his and it was like a lot of the same people. And he put, he did put LeBron in that list. And I asked him, like, where do you place yourself? And I, it's not only did he not have an answer, it was like, literally, he was like, I, I don't think that way yet, you know, like yeah. I will eventually, but you know, right now I'm not there because I'm right in the middle of it. I still have a lot mm -hmm. of hunger, you know, for for that next trip. All right, well, episode four of Stefan vs. the Game drops on Thursday. Gotham, thank you so much yeah, for being you. with us. Congrats, yeah. Yeah. Much yeah. more first things first. Right after this.